Oh, hello, come in. Oh, come in, nice to see you again. Have a seat. Oh, well, it's it's well you've come today. It's well you've caught me. I, I'm about to go off for a sort of speaking and reading tour um, and giving lectures and things in the in the United States. Um, I fly tomorrow, all being well. I've just had my negative COVID test. So um, anyway, uh, uh, I thought perhaps before I went, as you've dropped round, we might have another instalment of my. Um, growing Arthurian poem. Um, you may remember last time I explained that uh, I felt we needed some some of the story of the fair Dandran, who's the sister of Percival, who's the grail maiden who, who, who pilots Solomon's mystical ship, without whom and without whose understanding and dedication and, um, as we'll perhaps see later, self-sacrifice, actually, you know, the other, the, the the famous Grail Knights, Galahad and Bors and Percival, would never have achieved anything. I felt she should have her own quest. So you remember last time I gave you a poem, the beginning of the quest of Fair Day Dendron, um, it was called Dreams and Departure, and it was really about her childhood and how how eventually her mother, having let Percival go, has to let her go, a go off with her aunt, as a wise woman and her, her apprentice, as it were, uh, her, her novice into the woods to learn the way to fast and pray. And that's where the story picks up now. Uh, and um, we meet again the hermit Nacian. But through Nacian, I, I tell you some of the very important prehistory. I think backstory is too much like where the, 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 the how it was that the grail came to England, the, the, a touch also on, on Blake's wonderful thing about uh, the child Jesus in England in, in, in the poem Jerusalem and so on. So anyway, you'll see it all. It, 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 it's a, a bit of nature mysticism in it too. So, the quest of Fed Endran part two, the coming of Nacia. They journeyed far into the woods, quid kinswomen in their quest. Companionable silence grew as deep into the wild they do, and Dandran sensed more than she knew as that wise woman's guest. At length they saw her place of prayer, built up from mossy stone, the holy hermit's humble cell where she had long been wont to dwell, with garden green and deep clear well, guarded by many a prayer and spell, yet in her vigils in that vale she never prayed alone. For angels often came to her, and every bird and beast, and I'll teach you to call them too. Each beast and bird will come to you, and you will give your blessings too, to greatest as to least. She taught Dandran the way of prayer, the way to still her soul, the way to woo each beast and bird, and know each creature as a word breathed into being by our Lord. For God himself is the true bard, and sings creation through his word, and Dandran learned from all she'd heard, and knew each star, each stone, each bird, as parts of one great whole. By night she kept pure vigil there, and morning came too soon, for she would see the stars wheel by, and hear their music from on high, and feel their influence, and cry in ecstasy, when she'd descry a sphere of silver light drawn nigh. Then she would lift her eyes, and spy above the valley's chalice high, the wafer of the moon. And Andrain stayed there many weeks, learning to fast and pray, learning the lore of growing things, the secret songs the Lavrock sings, until she felt her soul grow wings and rise in her, and say, Not long now, and your quest begins. Old Nacian will come. In dreams he called you to, his ta to your task. He'll show the way if you but ask. The grain is breaking from the husk. The tawny owl floats through the dusk. You too must spread your wings and risk adventure far from home. And on the morrow, as the sun rose joyful in the east, they saw a figure drawing near who carried neither sword nor spear but leant upon a staff and wore a homespun cloak all worn and sear and drank the dew as though it were a rich and royal feast. She knew that figure from her dream, and knelt before him there. Arise, fair maid, the hermit said, for you and I have both been led to keep this meeting in the wood, 
All things conspire in us for good in water, earth and air. Dandran, I come from Carbonek, the castle wreathed with spells, the castle of the wounded king, whose lands lie waste <clears throat> until we bring the promised knight of whom they sing to heal him where he dwells. But few can ever find that place when once they leave its bourne. And even I cannot be sure, when once I've left, to find the door and trace again my pathways, or there is no sure return. But this I know and say to you, that you are called to go, to leave behind all privilege, to climb the sea cliffs ridge by ridge, and come unto the very edge, the edge of all you know. There may be no bridge back by land, no way across the waste, for many knights have perished there, or found but castles in the air, and their, their adventures fell or fair, left them alone at last. There may be no bridge back by land, but trust unto the sea. You saw a shining ship in dreams. I know not all the vision means, but in that vision hope still gleams, or so it seems to me. For I have also dreamed that ship, so has the fisher king. For on that ship... His kinsfolk came, out of disaster, war and flame. Long ages back, the ship bore them to these strange shores as in a dream, or so the poets sing. For you must know his lineage, the founding of his throne. They came here long ago, by sea, from Arimath, as refugees, Joseph and all his company, bearing with them the mystery of God the three in one. For Peles comes of Joseph's line, the fair friend of our Lord, who gave his grave unto the one who hung on rude, for to atone for all our sins and all alone defeated death, flung back the stone and on that glorious Easter morn renewed us in his word. Jesus appeared to Joseph then and gave him gifts most rare, the dish whereon he broke the bread. The chalice, whereof it is said, it held his heart's blood rich and red, whereby our inmost souls are fed, and also stained with his own blood, a dark and sacred spear. Take these, the Saviour said to him, and set out from this land, for Roman soldiers seek for you, since you were my disciple true, witness to all I say and do, and to my resurrection too. And I have more for you to do, and when the Spirit comes to you, then you will understand. They stood together on the shore. The Saviour raised his hand. And lo, there came a ship most fair, with silken sails and fittings rare, silent upon a breath of air. She shimmered by the strand. And then the Saviour spake again. This ship was made by Solomon, the wisest king of old. And he foresaw that I would come, the true fulfiller of his throne, foreknew what would be said and done, for all has been foretold. He, he caused this ship to be arrayed by all his art and craft, that she would never see decay, but bide in secret till the day I summon her, to make her way to bear you and these gifts away. And, like the old ark in her day, I bless her for and of. Remember, Joseph, years ago, when I was still a child, you took me on a ship with you, your merchant ship so tried and true, when star and story guided you through savage seas and wild. Remember how at last we found a green and pleasant land? You traded with the people there and let me run both free and fair, and I caught fish to feed you there. We feasted on the strand. Remember how I told you then a word of prophecy? You will return to this fair strand, and your descendants hold this land as fisher kings at my command, and with a cup of wine at hand they will remember me. You laughed, for I was yet a child. You thought it but a jest. But now, good Joseph, it comes true. I give the dish and cup to you, and my own blood and body too, to keep you on your quest. Lo, this fair ship will take you there, you and your household too, and likewise bear these holy things, whereof the bard and prophet sings, my blessing gives your vessel wings, my blessing goes with you. Then all of Joseph's people came and went aboard full fast, 
and stowed these treasures in the hold, with which Joseph's kin still have and hold. It was a glory to behold when they set sail at last. So runs the tale at Carpenach, where they remember well the holy ship of Solomon that sailed herself by sun and moon and brought them, when the voyage was done, to this strange isle of Albion and Glastonbury's Vale. And you will know as well as I what afterwards befell, how darkness came upon these lands, and heathen ships assailed her strands, and churches fell to heathen hands, and the true magic of these lands withdrew behind a veil. But Joseph's children kept the faith, his children's children too, and waited for a Christian king to rise again, for he would bring a rebirth and a flourishing, a time to make things new. When Arthur came to Camelot, we sensed the time had come, the time of which the prophets tell that our true Lord might lift the veil, the keepers of the Holy Grail might bring the chalice home. But even as we kindled hope, the tragic blow came down. The first knight who found out our keep did such a deed as made us weep, came like a wolf among the sheep and brought red ruin down. For Balin seized the holy spear, and maimed the fisher king. He might have reverenced the grail, but in him all our hope did fail. He came to wound and not to heal, and all that followed, dark and fell, was grief and sorrowing. When Balin struck the dolorous stroke, the turrets tumbled down. The land was wounded with its lord, and from the sky dark torrents poured. The river flooded every ford, and we were left alone. <laughs> but after three days, Merlin came and spoke a prophecy. All is not lost, the wizard said, for I can see through times ahead. I see a true knight and a maid in dark futurity. The knight will come of Pelle's line, and he'll undo this deed, and even with the sacred spear he'll heal the wound that's given here. The maiden pure will bring him here. A ship shall be their steed. Then Merlin took up Balin's sword and set it in a stone, and sent it floating on the flood, still darkened with kin-slaying blood. For out of evil will come good, and this sword will atone. Fed Andran, you have seen that night in visions and in dream. The knight you saw in armour red, the chosen knight, is Galahad, and from the stone he drew the blade that floated on the stream. And now the grail itself has shone a while in Arthur's court, and many knights set off in quest to follow it as they think best, but almost all will fail the test, for now the time is short. Your brother, brave Sir Percivale, and likewise good Sir Bors, companions unto Galahad, are seeking him through waste and wood, through forest, field and fen and flood and by deserted shores. But none of them can keep the quest until you come to them. You are the maiden long foretold, whom Merlin prophesied of old. And now you must be swift and bold and dare to do your dream. You have the gift of summoning, so this wise woman says. You call the birds out of the air. They dance above your tresses fair. Even the wolf from out his lair comes tame to you for blessings here. Now you must use your gift, most rare, to summon on some sundered shore the ship of elder days. So go, with blessings on your head, and seek the sundering seas. Walk prayerfully within the light, be guided by your dreams at night, and trust in wisdom, not in might. God will direct your inner sight into these mysteries. Then Nacian and the Hermitess laid hands upon her head. You are ordained, the hermit said, to this good work. You hold the thread that leads at last, through doubt and dread, to that great feast so long prepared, where on the high king's table spread, he gives himself, and you are fed with love's own wine and bread. So go, with blessings on your head, and blessings on your feet, Blessings without, blessings within, blessings from stranger and from kin, blessing on all that you begin and all that you complete. 
When Dandrine rose, it seemed a light was kindled in her face, and she took neither cloak nor purse, nor cared for better nor for worse, but still pursued her holy course, drawing her strength from one pure source of beauty and of grace. Farewell, she said. The good knight calls, and I must find him now. I go to seek the sundering sea, and summon from its mystery the sacred ship that summons me. I go to keep my vow. So that's the end of that section, quite a, a long one, but that sets her well on her adventures, and we'll next time perhaps see her summoning the ship. Thanks for dropping by. See you when I get back from America.